Hello and welcome to the Sentinel Technical Channel. Today we're going to be giving you a brief overview of the Sentinel CPPM4, fuzzy logic based CO2 only controller. The Sentinel C8, CPPM4 sorry, has a remote sensor on a 5 meter remote probe. An onboard photo cell tells you the difference between day and night, allows your CO2 to not run at night since your plants don't need CO2 at night. Uh, plugs into the bottom here with a quick disconnect connector. Uh, you'll notice we have a green LED up here that's giving you a constant updated reading of your CO2 levels in your room. Uh, to set the unit up, first you need to decide if you want to use the fuzzy logic mode or the CO2 generate mode. If you're using a compressed CO2 bottle and a CO2 regulator, you'd want to go ahead and set this up in the CO2 fuzzy mode. So you press the CO2 fuzzy on off, switch it to logic on, and press enter. What that does is it more rapidly turns your valve on and off and uh, maintains a, a more level CO2 level inside your growing space. Uh, but that rapid turning on and off would not be good for a CO2 generator running off propane or natural gas where you're turning a flame on and off consistently. Uh, if you are using the CO2 generator, you would switch this back the, to generate, press enter, it goes on there. The CO2 set point is the next item you would look at. Uh, we come set for the factory at 1,250. Common levels you'll see in indoor gardening is 750 parts per million up to 2,000 parts per million. Uh, most research says once you get to about 1,500, um, that's about the maximum you need. So that's what we recommend to people. Uh, you waste less CO2, less chance to have a buildup in your room. <clears throat> Uh, the min, the CO2 dead band is the amount that it's going to allow uh, the CO2 level to fluctuate within your room. So if you're using a CO2 generator and you set it for 1500 parts per million, once the unit reads that it gets down to 1450 parts per million, it's going to turn your generator back on. Uh, that dead band is settable between 0 and 200 parts per million. The CO2 mode is usually something no one will use in our uh, in the indoor gardening industry. You can increase or decrease CO2 with the CPPM. Uh, if you were doing mushroom growing or using it in a home brew type setup where you didn't want CO2 to build up from fermentation, you could uh, evacuate the CO2 out of that area using this. Uh, sometimes people accidentally push the CO2 mode, so a quick troubleshooting tip. If you ever notice that your CO2 is not turning on and it's below the set point you have, uh, you'll want to check the CO2 dead band to make sure it's within that range or check to make sure you didn't accidentally press the CO2 mode button and change it to decrease. We have a min-max recall feature here that'll tell you the highest and lowest CO2 levels that your unit has read, um, let you know if it's ever getting too low, in which case you might need to increase the flow of your regulator or lower your dead band, or if it's getting too high you might need to decrease the flow of your regulator or um, decrease the amount of burners you're using on your CO2 generator to keep from overshooting your set point. Using the CO2 calibrate feature, you can calibrate the unit um, within your own home. You don't need a reference gas or anything, unlike um, some more complicated CO2 units. What you do is you take the remote probe and put it outside in fresh air. Uh, make sure to keep it out of direct sunlight. Let the unit run for an hour or so. That allows everything to get to the same temperature. It allows the uh, CO2 sensor to stabilize. Gives you a good baseline reading. Then you come up to your main unit and press and hold the CO2 calibrate button. You'll notice this goes to 380 parts per million, which is what we use as a baseline calibration and what we can refer to as an ambient level. You can uh, then press and hold the CO2, the enter reset button for about four seconds, the CO2 cal feature comes up on the display, meaning it's calibrating. This is gonna take about uh, eight to 10 minutes to calibrate, but we recommend you let it run for another hour after that once again to allow everything to stabilize. Uh, at that time, you can turn your, your power switch off, unplug the unit, and move it back into your growing environment. But you definitely wanna take it outside of an enclosed area and away from people because just your, you can breathe on this sensor and uh, see a rapid change just from, from breath. So it really has to be in an area where it's uh, unadulterated, uh, not messed with.